welcome to our Amplified Life. And Amy and I thought it would be fun today to just kind of show you a behind the scenes look at our cabbie business. We used to do a um, behind the curtain, I think we called it, and we did a series with different stylists. So go back in our playlist and check out those videos because it highlights different things that drew different women into this business and this company. And I think you might find it really enlightening. Whether you're interested in something in addition to what you do now, or maybe a complete career or life change, or you think that you may have a friend that could be great being a stylist and serving women in this capacity, there's going to be some great information you can glean from that. And there may be a few fun tidbits that Amy and I share today as well. So Amy... I know that uh, we both, so we both came on to this company, into this company, the same time, your second go round, but you had a little bit of a, um, a break, a, a vacation, we'll call it, between your stylist careers. So just share a little bit about what drew you back that second time first, maybe why you had um, left initially, and then why you came back. Okay. Well, I'm even going to rewind even more just because I think it's an important point. I think a lot of us dip our toes in these, um, side hustle businesses because we just need a little extra money to do something. And my something was I needed to make some money to try and supplement my husband's health. He had gotten sick. Everything that I thought I knew how to sell. I felt like I needed a doctor's licensed to sell vitamins, minerals, that kind of thing. So when Cabby came into my life, I was not getting into it for the clothes or for anything else. What drew me in is I thought, I think I could do this and people seem to like it. And I could learn about clothes without feeling like I need a degree. So I sold Cabby for five years, took five years off. So yeah, it was a little break. The reason I left is uh, it was actually a lot like now. And in hindsight, I wish I wouldn't have, but there were a couple different factors. So first I was pregnant with my little girl that you now know as my assistant who's 13. But at the time I had boys that were seven and 10. I was still working a bank job and I had this new baby coming and I could see how fast time was going by for my boys. And the economic crash of 0809 had hit. I had already built my cabbie business up to where my original goal meant I could have walked away from the from the banking industry. But with a baby coming and a husband with a chronic disease, all of a sudden his business, which was completely built on expendable income, started to take a hit with the economic crash and he did not have health insurance. And so all the goals that I had built up to be able to walk away from my banking job started to vanish. And I have to admit, I hit panic mode a little bit because I didn't want to continue working two jobs with a new baby and older boys. I also knew we needed our health insurance and my husband's business was really struggling at the time. I mean, we made it through really. And that's why I say in hindsight, I wish I wouldn't have walked away from Cabby from that period of time. But that's one of the greatest things that I have found about this business is the flexibility that it gives me to adapt to my family's needs. So whether it was me walking away for five years or now um, my schedule changes. So one season I may offer Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays for shows, another off season, it might be Tuesdays, Thursdays, or maybe a weekend here or there. I've always been able to adapt my schedule after my family's schedule is taken care of. And so um, I think that just carries me through why I still do it, why I love it, why I'm here long term. And also my decision to come back because in that five year window, I had been looking for other things because I thought I've done cabby. I walked away. I'm afraid to start it back up. What are people going to say? I gave all my clients away. And so it, it was a real tug and pull and I looked for other things. And I can tell you 
there was nothing else that compared to the flexibility, the income, and the joy that it brought me and fulfilled filled me. So it kind of hit all the things. And that's really what brought me back. So that was the long-winded yeah. answer to your question. Well, one quick question from that. Were you, did you buy the clothes? Were you a client of the clothing label prior to becoming a stylist? And if so, how long? Okay. So yes, I was a I was a hostess for a year and a half. So that's three seasons of Cabby. And um, the interesting thing is though, I was a young mom at the time. And I couldn't really justify or afford the clothes without hosting. And so I definitely hosted if I wanted some clothes. And then when I walked away from Cabby, all of a sudden I lost a huge part of my income. And as I said, my husband's business was struggling. So I had to choose the bank over Cabby. So I went to a clunky car. So I didn't have a car payment. And I didn't even host shows in those five years or shop, but you know what? My cabbie wardrobe from my first five years of selling got me through until I decided to sell again. And that was, oh my gosh, you guys, it saved me so much because I still felt confident. I still had nice clothes to wear, um, but I all of a sudden lost all my income and I couldn't afford to just pay retail for it. And um, so I kind of had to rip the bandaid off cold turkey and just not shop for a while because it was really a heartbreaking decision I had to make. Um, yeah, so I, I've done it all. I have shopped it. I have hosted it. I have sold it. I've walked away from it and I'm back. And um, so I definitely relate to many, many of my hostesses. What about you? No. Why don't you give us a little background really quick? So I was a client slash hostess for eight or nine, maybe a little bit longer than that, um, years before I became a stylist. And I was actually in a leadership role with a different company and different direct sales company uh, prior to embarking on this career. And it was really one of those things that I had lots of things going on. I thought that I really couldn't fit anything else into my life, but yet I also knew that my heart was not in the vision and the mission of the company I was currently with, and I needed a change. And so um, it just so happened. And for those that are not, I guess, versed on how cabby works there's actually an application process with our company and just because you apply does not mean that you're accepted and we also do not have territories but we go by what's called cabby courtesies so we may go to an area and work with someone but um that's a very close friend or family member but if there's people that maybe are coming to her show from another that would normally shop with another stylist, we send them back. But um, so anyway, the application process and, you know, Cabby takes a, a look at demographics and, and they want us to be successful. So all that to be said that the stylist that I was working with reached out to me and said, hey, there may be an, an opportunity in your area. And um, I think that this would be the time if, if ever there was a time, this would be the time for you to make this choice. And I thought, okay, I love the clothes. There's no question about that. It's just, how do I fit this into my life? And what does that look like? And I really kind of molded over for a few weeks. And I was in a leadership program at that time. And we were getting ready to go to a two week trip to South Africa. And um, it was kind of one of those that I needed to make the choice, but I left. So it was just off of my mind. And I thought, okay, this is what I'll do. I'm going to talk to Kevin about it. And he's going to say, there's no way. What are you even considering this for? And that'll be an easy decision. So I did. And <clears throat> he says, well, why haven't you applied already? 
that was not what I was looking for. <laughs> but, you know, my husband is a very smart man and it, it ended up being just such a great decision. But I did apply, actually found out that I had been accepted when I got back from South Africa. And then it was just kind of um, a brand new season of life. And it was fantastic for me because it was the affirmation I needed to close the door and the chapter on that other area of my life that was just really honestly robbing joy from my soul and um, really jump both feet into a company that I fully believe in with a mission that I am a hundred percent behind and just, you know, add so much joy to my life. You know, it's interesting that you uh, got your affirmation from Kevin because uh, when I was coming back the second time, I was at a stoplight and texted my former team leader and I said, I think I want to do this again, but I'm going to have to buy a car. I need to figure out health insurance. I want to quit my bank job. I need to find some business because I gave it all away. Oh, and I haven't even talked to my husband yet. <laughs> and like the universe had to align. And as soon as I, and I started crying. And as soon as I hung up, I texted my husband and I said, I think I'm going to do cabbie again, but these are the things. And he goes, I've been waiting for you to do it again for five years. And so I do think that our husbands, they may not vocalize things that they can foresee, but they can definitely see the difference in us when there's joy and hard work. And also, uh, my husband doesn't like to support anything that wastes time or money. And he likes to see money coming in. And so he knew that I built up a good business before, and he just knew I could do it again. And so he knew better than I did. There was a lot of pressure feeling like I, I have to do this again. But I think that's a proven factor that if I can do it twice, somebody can do it once. Um, but yeah, men are interesting. I think sometimes we just carry the weight of the world on our shoulders and forget to talk to them about it. And oftentimes they're the one that would say, well, yeah, it, it it's silly not to, you know, just give it a try. And so I love that you talked about that with him and, and what a fresh start for you. So that had to feel good coming off of that trip and just knowing, okay, I'm diving in full force and I'm just going to go for it. It 100% was, it was very much life-changing and I'm so grateful, um, for that aspect. And like you've said, the income, um, the income making aspect of this business, it's just time spent on one thing is time spent away from another. And so we have to be very choosy with what we spend our time on and, I, I'm like you um, just said, it has to be a good use of my time. You know, it has to bring me joy, make me money, add something to my family. Those are kind of my litmus tests to things that I want to be involved in. And, and it's just been so good. And I look at the relationships, you know, beyond the financial aspect of it, which has been so rewarding, but the relationships have been so incredible beyond that. I mean, if it weren't for Cabby, I would have never met you and had this opportunity to um, just really have such a great friend. And I look at my clients that have become like friends and family to me and just all of the incredible women that we get to do this business with. And that's such a huge perk as well. I just can't even imagine life without that. Well, and on that relationship thing, I want to say, I think a lot of women hesitate with businesses like this because they feel like their relationships are going to be damaged because then people are only going to think it's about the business. And I really have to say it's been the opposite for me. Of course, there's always going to be somebody that may think that way or whatever. But um, for me, I've learned a really big life lesson that when others show up for you, you show up for them. And that doesn't necessarily mean buying all the products in the world or, or whatever else, because we do get bombarded in this um, type of business. But I will say, you know, I have met some of the most incredible people that 
have shown up for me outside of cabbie. Um, and then when they need something, I'm like, no, 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 I'm going no matter what. I just got to celebrate my friend Abby's birthday. You know, I could have just easily said, I can't go. It's a night. I don't see my husband very often, whatever, but we have always shown up for each other and she shows up for me. And then I have a friend that's coming to the wedding that has supported me for 20 years. And um, there's just a lot of different aspects behind the relational side of this business that we don't necessarily think about because it's not really something tangible. I can't give you a book and say, read this, it's going to happen. It's just, it's there is some kind of vulnerability with doing this, both you and them. When you see someone in their bra and underwear, you know, it kind of is like, okay, let's, let's get down to the business. And also, you know, let's talk. And I think it really removes a lot of the barriers that women has, and it allows us to connect on a level that we don't normally connect on, but that's outside of the cabbie walls within the cabbie walls. Like you said, like you are one of my dearest friends. Um, the mentors that we have, the the people that have taught me to self-reflect and to look deep within inside myself, I have learned life lessons from these women that I am now handing down to my daughter that I would have never gained anywhere else. I can't even imagine the person that I might have been had I not done this. I've grown so much as a human being. So um yeah, it's not tangible and you can't put a dollar on it, but it's priceless. Oh, so well said. Couldn't agree more. So maybe just a little bit of a brief overview of our company. So we were founded in 2001. Um, there were 12 women who founded this company. We have a design team of four women, which I personally love because you know, they, it, it's just fantastic that women are designing clothes for women. And it just really makes sense, doesn't it? And not only that, we have one designer that's five feet and like size zero. And we've got another one that's a six foot. Um, we've got another that's, you know, a 14, 16. And so they are all different personality types, all different um, style profiles, all different sizes and heights, and they just really kind of know. So those are a few of the things that I personally love about our company and just the um, mission that we have to affect lives through relationships. And that's really seen from an executive level down to a stylist level. Um, it's, it's always interesting to me too, how people that have been shopping Cabby for quite a while, they kind of feel like, well, it must be everywhere. And so when they start telling their friends about it and they're like, oh, I've never heard of that, then it's, it's just blows their mind. Well, there's only like 2,500 of us stylists throughout all of the US, UK and Canada 2,500. So yeah. there's just so much market area that's available to stylists as well. I think that's a huge opportunity. Don't you, Amy? I do. And I want to, I want to add one thing about our design team, um, in the fashion marketplace, when you start to see designers and stores close down and things struggle, really, it comes down to one thing and it's that they've forgotten who their audience is. And we've been seeing this in the marketplace in different types of products all over right now. Politically, it's been heated and different things. But our design team, they have never forgotten who they are designing for. I remember the scoop after um, COVID. They stood up there and they were in tears because they got to be in person with us again. And um, these ladies they wear the clothes too. They design them for you. They go back and look at the vintage cabbie so that they make sure that they're designing things that can move forward with you. And I think that is so priceless, especially right now. They've never forgotten who their audience is. And our target demographic is women 40 and over. 
But the coolest thing about our design team is they make it, as Rebecca said, depending on your style profile, they make it applicable down, I would say, to 16 and up to 80, 90 years old. I've had clients in that entire space. So they're classically designed, but with a modern feel and flow. And it's because our, our design team is so in tune with who we are as a whole. And that just is not, nobody can seem to replicate that in the marketplace. And once you get your eye on that, you see what makes Cabby special. You see why we say that Cabby comes with compliments. And it's a bigger thing than just the tailoring and just, you know, it's it's our design team as a whole. Yeah, that's so important to me how, and I, I can't figure out how they can be so on trend and yet timeless from season to season to season. But as a client, it was important to me that that was true and correct because if I was going to invest in the pieces, I wanted them to live in my wardrobe for a long time. And as a stylist, it's important to me because we talk about it all the time, Amy, we're building a cohesive wardrobe over time with you. And because we stay in the same dye lot season to season, then that makes it super easy. Everything just color coordinates. And so from the stylist perspective, those are huge advantages. And obviously from the client perspective, they're reaping huge benefits from that. Well, and speaking of benefits and dye lots, one of the greatest parts of our business is our technology. So we have our Cabby Tap app. If you're not familiar with it, it's a way that your clients can do several things. I'm gonna hit touch points really fast. One, they can shop with you 24 hours a day, seven days a week at the touch of a button while they're scrolling at midnight because their husband's snoring. The other thing is it does create a virtual closet. So those dialogues that don't change, we're the only designer in the entire marketplace that actually cares what you've paid for in the past and keeps track of it for you. Not only that, you can put your non-specific, non-cabby items in the app and it will help create mix and match items and outfits for you. Um, you can save your favorites, which I always say favorites are free. It's a virtual like wish list and that helps you coordinate with Rebecca and I. So Let's say you have five favorites in, in your app and you're dying over this one piece. You can call us and say, okay, give me the rundown. Or if I can tell you've got favorites and I'm doing my homework, I might call you up and say, guess what? This is running low on stock. You may want to jump on that now. And so the technology is amazing. Not only do we have our app, but we can now do virtual through the cabby platform virtual shows which is different from zoom it's actually called front row and it's got all the cabby tap technology right there so distance does not matter rebecca already talked about not having territories well now we can go virtual and you can not only have a local party where people are in person but maybe you've moved and you still have friends from two states away and you want to include them you can do something virtually that way there's just so many great things and benefits to our technology. We can even do a monthly subscription box for you. It, I, I don't like it to call it that, but it's the easiest way to explain to you what it is. But we can actually do custom orders for you once a month if that's something that you want. Of course, Rebecca and I, at least I'll speak for myself, but I always prefer the hands-on, get in front of the rack, play with the clothes, touch and feel rather than the subscription thing. If you've touched and felt and you just have a certain budget, that's one of the best things about the app that you can just go like, these are my wish lists for the season. And this is what I'm going to order on my own when I get there. And um, so there's, it creates so much flexibility for you. Um, and as a stylist, the benefit for us, and Rebecca can add something this, is that I know if you have questions, I can easily answer it. I came from the days of paper order sheets and calculators and somebody would say, I really want that floral top. Okay, what colors are in the floral top? And now we can just pull up the app and I can serve my clients so much quicker, so much faster. 
and I've done FaceTimes with them, Zooms, gone over their favorites list. So the technology has just given us such a wonderful boost to our business. Rebecca, what would you say? Well, and I would add to that just the efficiency of the technology. So it used to be that we would collect orders at shows. And then when we got home, we'd have to spend an hour or two putting those in and doing all of the back office type things for the show. And today, because of the apps that we have, everything is done at the show. I don't have added work when I get home. And so it's just a speed and efficiency thing. And 50% of our stylists today work other full or part-time jobs alongside of their cabbie career. And so that's important when you're thinking about busy mamas, um, somebody that is working part-time and chasing kids. Maybe, you know, we have plenty of doctors and lawyers and professional women that are also working this, this business because they just need that influx of joy in their life. And so um, speed and efficiency is very, very important. And I had just thought of something that I wanted to say that was, I'm sure going to be revolutionary, revolutionary. And now it, it eluded me. <laughs> It'll come back. It'll come back. It will come back. Um, yeah. I think, I think yeah. another part that we need so to... smart. Amy. Well, so we've covered, so we get great income. So I want to just say some of the benefits to the business are, there are three sources of income for us. We have our retail sales which we can earn 25 or 33% on. We have our sample sales, which if you've been a client of ours, you understand that at the end of each season, we get to sell our pieces off to you, our VIPs, and that helps us invest back into the next collection. And then we also, if you know somebody or you're sitting there going, gosh, I really should do this, if you start up a cabbie business, we do not get paid recruitment fees. So just get that out of the way. But if we do our job as a leader, then we will earn an additional bit of income based on how good of a leadership we do with you. So if you're working your business, we're helping you prove successful, then we can earn a business based on our sales. So I think that's the thing that's really important is we never get to quit. We have to do this business if we want to make income. And I love that aspect. Um, maybe this is the trigger for you. Our Heart of Cabbie Foundation. It is a big, big thing. Um, we are up to over $65 million of cloning, cloning, clothing and monetary funds donated to natural disaster relief. In fact, depending on what day we get this loaded, my local, my love local event is May 20th. And this one is going to be closed to the public because we will be at the battered women's shelter, but such a cool opportunity to go and get these women clothed back into some nice clothes so that they can go to work and continue their lives. Um, and then of course we have our make a change and we're funding small business loans and paying for income. So Lots of good philanthropy things going on with Cabby. Did I trigger any of your yeah. memories, Rebecca? Well, no, but there was something I wanted to say a little bit about that, the finance thing. Um, first of all, we do have mandatory minimums. And I think sometimes that's a little bit scary for people. Don't worry. It's something that we, we train you and all the things that need to happen. And they're not crazy minimums. However, it also... It, it just helps protect everyone. So it protects Amy and I as current stylists, it protects our company, and it really protects you as a new stylist, that you have a focus and you know that you can't just say, oh, I'm going to sell cabbie and get fun clothes. That's not what we're here for. Um, and then we also have... Um, it's, it's just a, a fantastic opportunity to go and train in person, but that is mandatory as well. So many companies are going to just let you sign up and 
work with their company. That's not how we work. It is, like I said before, an application process, and there are mandatory things that have to happen for you to remain a stylist with Cabby. And those, those are huge to me because I come from a background where those were not in place, and I saw um, the bad side of not having mandatory training and mandatory minimums. Well, and our business model actually kind of alleviates that naturally anyway. So most of those companies, if you sign up, you're signing up because you like the product and you just want to add a discount. So if that's your mentality, what I would say to you is just be a hostess because you're going to get as many clothes as you want to earn as a hostess. You can host multiple times in one season and earn your clothes at a discount way more efficiently than you could if you tried to just sign up for the discount and then all of a sudden you got an entire rack of clothes that are not even your size and then what you're not making the income on it and any and anything else so I really think that our business model the protection of those that actually want to run a business was built into it and the only way, there's only two ways you can even get a discount with Cabby. The first one is to host. The second one would be our sample sale at the end of this season. And for me, as well as Rebecca and almost all of the stylists, you're only allowed to shop that discount if you've shopped with us in the past and if you're a hostess. So it's very protected even within its our little niche. Um, and, you know, there's always people that, you know, can find, find us and find different things, but that way you're getting the items that you want. So I do love that Rebecca touched on that. And that's also why I said we don't recruit because we don't, we do not recruit just to build this team of 30,000 people and say that we never have to work again. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely. <laughs> um, the other, I, I have a couple things I wanted to just share. 85% or more of stylists, they renew each season, and that's huge. In the direct sales industry, that's less than 25% typically. So um, that just kind of shows that this is a true business model. And um, before we kind of wrap up and Amy takes us out, if you are Amy or I's clients and you want more information, she's probably going to touch more on this, but we're happy to visit one-on-one -on -one with you. There's also some live trainings that you can do with some other people so you can get different perspectives than ours, but um, there's always more information available to you with absolutely no pressure we just want to share it with you if you're interested. So if you work with another stylist, make sure and reach out to her. But if you are one of Amy or I's, we would love to visit with you. Yes. And, and it is specific to each stylist. So just to clarify, definitely reach out to us as individuals because Rebecca and I share everything, but we do run individual businesses and we have to serve you individually. And so it's just something that we are so grateful that we get to collaborate on all of these things. Um, but your needs may be better met by Rebecca and they will be better, better, wow. Better bet. Met by Rebecca if she serves you as a hostess. So yeah. we just respect each other's businesses individually as well as other stylists. So we just, and that goes for sample cells, that goes for new arrivals, that goes for joining Cabby. Um, as Rebecca mentioned, there are Cabby courtesies, and she and I personally take those very serious and hope that other stylists do as well. Um, so we just want to thank you for coming each week. When you do have that little tick in your mind about, gosh, maybe I could do this or I've thought about it, but it just, I don't know if I could do what they do or, um, oh, I have a friend that would love to be in the fashion business. Even if it doesn't do anything or amount to anything, just mention it to us because 
it has to be a two-way street. They have to want to do it and it has to be a good fit. And so there's absolutely zero pressure at all, but we would love to bring the joy to somebody that we have been given through this business as well. So thank you. I for remembered what I was going to say. Oh, hold then, on. Hold on. Say it. <laughs> say it. Say it. Totally made me think of it. So it was, if you don't have any fashion knowledge or styling knowledge or any of that, don't let that keep you from embarking on this as a career, because all of that can be trained. What you need to have to be successful at this business is a true love of others, an, a willingness and ability to serve them well and to care about what's best for them and to be coachable and trainable and have a real go-getter type attitude. That's important. Not having all of the fashion knowledge and all of the styling knowledge and all of that. That's why you had to wait because it was perfect for me saying you can think about it. It was awesome. Okay. So with Rebecca's last little points, we are going to see you on the flip side and we want you to stay fashionable, stay joyful, and we will see you next.